Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Since I uploaded my recent Q&A talking about my family and my life in America, I've been getting a lot of questions on how or why I came to the decision to move to Switzerland. Of course, this is a huge topic for me because moving to Switzerland literally changed my entire life. Sometimes I have days where I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I live in Switzerland. When did that happen? <laughs> so I'll just tell you the story, I guess. So I guess where I left off in my Q&A video was when I was 17 years old and I moved out. So I was halfway through my senior year and I was suddenly on my own and I didn't have a job and I didn't have any money. This was the very beginning of 2010, which I think that was a very difficult time for anybody to get a job. But I just kind of hit the pavement every single day after school. I was filling out applications, talking to managers of companies, and really just doing whatever I could to get a job. And somehow, by the grace of God, I got a job within a week. So I worked as much as I could. I got through my senior year of high school. I graduated. I picked up a second job. So I was working at two restaurants. I was working at a burger place in Utah. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but it was called Training Table. They were really famous for their cheese fries. What made them different was that all of their tables had a phone, like an old-fashioned phone, and that's how you would order. You would just pick up the phone, and I was the one behind the counter that would answer the phone and take your order and then call you back when your food is ready so you can come pick it up. And then I was at the cash register and all that good stuff. It was actually a really fun job. I made a lot of really good friends there. And then I also worked part-time at Subway. I hated it. I hated Subway. That was the worst job. <laughs> But I did work with some friends there too, so that was pretty fun. So I was working two jobs, Colvin was working two jobs. He actually worked with me at Training Table, which was so much fun. I will always look back at those times and just, it just warms my heart. It was just such a good time. We were so happy. We spent so much time together. We worked together and then we were together all the time outside of work. It was really just the best. We were so carefree. We had no money, we had nothing, and we just didn't even care. So, so throughout the summer, me and Colvin started talking about our futures. What do we want? Do we want to go to school? Do we want to move? Do we want to get married? Just what do we want? Because we didn't want to be working at restaurants forever. And so we both started thinking about different career options, different school options. Neither of us really wanted to go to school in the States because it's really expensive and neither of us were really willing to get tons and tons and tons of loans to go to school. And from the very beginning, pretty much, I told Colvin, I wanna to go to Switzerland. I wanna to move to Switzerland. And he always kind of just told me like, you, you haven't been there yet, you can't decide that. We'll have to wait a couple of years, we'll save up our money, and then we can go visit, and you can see it, and then you can make your decision, and then we can make a plan from there. But throughout this whole time, I was just so adamant, like, we need to go to Switzerland. We need to be in Switzerland. And I had never been there. I didn't know that much about Switzerland. So looking back, I don't even know why I was so set on it. And it got to the point where I was talking about Switzerland all the time. <laughs> I would talk about it to my friends all the time. I would talk about it to Colvin all the time. I was constantly researching things about Switzerland. I was constantly asking Colvin about Switzerland. I became a little bit obsessed. I was probably really annoying at that time because we had no money. Like how on earth would we move across the world? I even remember looking at apartments online for Zurich. <laughs> So we just kept working in our restaurants. We went on little road trips together. We had a really good time. And then in November, Colvin proposed. And of course I said, yes, it was wonderful. Everything was great. But we really thought like, okay, we're gonna be engaged, but we're, we're not gonna rush a wedding. It'll probably be like at least two years until we actually get married. And we were okay with that. We weren't really stressed about it. But I was still really adamant that we need to move to Switzerland. We need to be in Switzerland. I just knew in my heart that Switzerland is where I want to build our lives. Switzerland is where I want to raise our children. It's just, I don't know, I could just feel it in my heart that this is where we were supposed to be, even though I had never been there before. <laughs> so we got engaged in November, and then in December, Colvin's parents invited us to come visit for Christmas. I was so, 
so excited. <laughs> so when we called his parents to tell them our good news, that we were engaged, we said to them, look, we want to move to Switzerland. Is there any way we could maybe stay with you until we get on our feet? Would it be possible for you to help us? Like, we would like to move to Switzerland. And they said to us that first we need to get an education and then we should move to Switzerland. And I remember when we got off the phone call, I was just crying and crying. We just weren't willing to get into so much debt. And I really felt in my heart that if we started to build our lives in America, that we would stay in America. I just knew that we needed to start in Switzerland now and not when we already have something in the US and then leave it to go to Switzerland. Even though our education probably would have transferred, I just knew in my heart that we needed to start from the bottom in Switzerland. But after they told us that, I was really heartbroken, I was really sad, but I was still just so excited to be able to visit Switzerland. And then I felt like I could say whether or not, like, yes, this is what I want, or actually, no, I don't really like this place. I don't want to live here. So we came to Switzerland for Christmas. We visited for, I think it was two weeks. And during this time, we talked to his parents about you know, what we want for the future and our goals. And we really just talked to them and said, listen, this is where we want to be. We don't want to get an education in the States. We don't want to get into debt. We want to do it here. We want to start our lives here. And I think just having that like in-person conversation was really needed for a big conversation like that. It's not really something you can do over the phone. And also during this time, I just felt so in love with Switzerland. Cohen and his family just showed me so much and told me so much about Switzerland and I had so many questions and they answered everything that I wanted to know. And in the end, we decided with his parents that we would be moving to Switzerland. And it was like, once we made the decision, it was like, boom, we're getting stuff done. We're gonna make this happen. So immediately, Colvin wrote out his resume, got everything ready, and he started applying for apprenticeships. So after the Christmas break, he stayed here so that he could keep applying for apprenticeships. And they do this thing here where if they're interested in having you be their apprentice, they'll have you come do like a test or week or a test or day where they come and you get to work for them for a day or a week and then they see if they want to hire you. So Colvin was applying at auto garages and he had a lot of people interested in him. So he had to go do a lot of those. They're called Schnuppertag or Schnupperwoche. And at first we were really nervous that nobody would want to have Colvin as their apprentice because usually in Switzerland you're like 16 or 17 years old when you do an apprenticeship and he was like 20 or was he 21? So he was a little bit old and people kind of thought that was strange but he had a lot of garages interested in him which was great so he had to stay here and he had to go do those tester days, tester weeks and I had to fly back to America all by myself and I was so terrified. I had never flown by myself before let alone flying across the entire planet and I was just so nervous to say goodbye to everything I had ever known all by myself. I had to get rid of all of our belongings. I had to get a bunch of documents that I needed in order to immigrate. I had to get a wedding dress because we had to get married ASAP for me to stay in Switzerland. And it was really hard for me to do all that without Colvin. And it was really one of those situations where you find yourself in a time of need and then suddenly there's nobody there to help you. So I really struggled. I was kind of like, where did all my friends go? I thought that there was people here that cared about me, but it really, a lot of people felt like, oh, you're leaving? Well, I don't need to put any more effort into you. I got a lot of that reaction from a lot of friends and some family, which was really hurtful. But luckily, one of my best friends in the whole world, her name is Eliza. She's been one of my best friends since I was in the fifth grade. She was in a little transition period of her life where she was just finishing school and looking for a job. So she had a lot of free time. So she really just like took me and was like, me and you are doing this together. You are not gonna do this alone. And I was so grateful for her because if it wasn't for her, I would have been wedding dress shopping all by myself. I would have been just saying goodbye to everything I had ever known completely alone. So I'm just really grateful for her. She's like the best friend I could ever ask for. She let me basically stay with her the whole time I was in the US because I didn't want to be alone. I just felt really lonely. And I just felt like for the first time, 
that I don't belong here. Like this is not my home. And it was a really shocking feeling. But at the same time, it was a huge blessing because I feel like it would have been really difficult to leave because I had to fly back to Switzerland all by myself. And if I would have felt sad for leaving, I think that would have been really difficult. But I really had this strong feeling like I don't belong here. So flying back to Switzerland was such a relief in my heart. So I was in the US for I think about three weeks. I got rid of everything we owned, my stuff and Colvin's stuff. I got a wedding dress, I got all my documents. I packed up literally just our clothing. I had one piece of luggage filled with Colvin's clothes and one piece of luggage filled with my clothes. I had a carry-on filled with like wedding stuff that we needed and then I had my wedding dress. And that was all I got to bring with me back to Switzerland. And my friend Eliza drove me to the airport and she was the only one there to say goodbye and I flew away back to Switzerland. None of my friends really wanted to say goodbye. No one in my family really said goodbye. And I felt like for the first time that I was going home. But it definitely was not an easy road after that. Living in a new culture is hard enough, but I was also living with a new family. Um, a family that I didn't know very well. I didn't know how their family systems were. I was so young and I didn't even realize how much my family systems affected me and how that really made it difficult for me to mesh into my new family. It was a rocky road at first. I'm so lucky that his family has so much love. They were a lot less judgmental than they could have been. <laughs> I really struggled to integrate into the new family. But they were there every step of the way to help me to understand Swiss culture and to really get on my feet in this new country. So there's my little story. I hope that I didn't forget any details. I think moving to Switzerland was one of the hardest yet one of the easiest things I've ever done. If you guys want me to talk about the process or my experience integrating into Swiss culture, I would be happy to do a video about that. Just let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'm really enjoying getting really personal with you guys. I think it's so fun and I just love reading your guys' comments. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Don't forget to enjoy the journey and I'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Ciao, me